The FAST exam has traditionally four views, the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, the pelvic views, and the subcostal views. To find the right upper quadrant view, we're going to draw an imaginary line from the xiphoid process all the way to the mid-axillary line. Where these two lines meet is where the probe placement will begin. The probe is going to be held in a coronal plane with a marker dot pointed towards the head. For the right upper quadrant view of the FAST exam, we're going to place our transducer where the imaginary lines of the xiphoid process and the mid-axillary line intersect. Our marker dot is going to be pointed towards the patient's head. We're going to place a transducer on the patient's body. To look down into Morrison's pouch or the hepatorenal fossa, we're going to need to tilt the transducer down, actually aiming towards the kidney and into this potential space. We're going to, to in order for us to sm see small amounts of fluid, we'll need to move the transducer over several different intercostal spaces. For the left upper quadrant view, we're going to be imaging around the spleen. To find this view, we're going to draw an imaginary line from the xiphoid process all the way over to the posterior axillary line. Where these two lines intersect, we're going to place the probe for our perisplenic or left upper quadrant view. The left upper quadrant image is obtained by again drawing an imaginary line from the xiphoid process all the way over to the posterior axillary line. As we place the transducer in this area, we're going to be looking for any fluid that may collect around the spleen. We're going to look at the superior pole of the spleen and aim down so that we can also see the inferior pole of the spleen as well. The third view of the FAST exam is going to be looking in the pelvis for free fluid. To do this, we generally look in two different orientations. The first that we're going to use is going to be the sagittal view. In this view, we're going to place the probe just above the pubis symphysis with the marker dot pointed towards the patient's head. After we've imaged the sagittal view, we'll rotate the probe 90 degrees, again, just above the pubis symphysis, looking in this orientation for free fluid. For the pelvic views, we're going to place the transducer first in a sagittal orientation with the transducer just above the pubic symphysis. We're going to identify the bladder, and in this case the prostate, and then fan the transducer side to side, looking for any free fluid that may be present in this space. After we have looked in a sagittal orientation, we're going to rotate the marker dot towards the patient's right, and again fan forward and backward, making sure to identify any free fluid that may live in the peritoneal space.